So the next two interns came to this program from a little bit of an unusual route. Usually students hear about our internships from their peers or from professors that incorporate the Holocaust or other aspects of human rights history into their curriculums. But Ela and Noel, um, well, Noah, Noel came to the center because of Professor Liz DiGiorgio. And she's in the Queensboro Department of Art and Design. And Professor DiGiorgio was a participating faculty member in this year's KH KHRCA's colloquia, testimony across the disciplines, cultural and artistic responses to genocide that was made possible through our National Endowments for the Humanities Challenge Grant. So aside from being active participants in this internship program and interviewing their survivors, both Ela and Noel spent the summer, the semester and their spring break creating artwork that to them helped represent the lives of Holocaust survivors. Their pieces were meant to help us explore the possibilities that visual arts can offer for learning and understanding and empathizing with the experience of survivors. The artwork that they produced was actually on display here all of last semester in our rotating gallery. So uh, first we're gonna hear from Ila. Uh, Ila is passionate about art and has been drawing since the age of 10. She's particularly interested in graphic design and she participated in this program because she wanted to gain more knowledge about the Holocaust and she wanted to use her artistic skills to contribute to the work of our center. She interviewed survivor Ethel Katz, who also has expressed herself through artwork. So I invite you to come up. Hello, everyone. Um, first, I, I would like to thank Professor DiGiorgio for offering me such an amazing internship, and I really appreciate all the help that you put into. Thank you. Um, also, I would like to thank um, Mo, uh, Mar Mar Marissa. Sorry, Marissa. Um, I had a great time in your class, and I've learned a lot. And all the goodies that, that you always bought in, <laughs> they were amazing, really, yeah. Um, okay. So during this internship, I've gained a lot, a lot of knowledge about the Holocaust and a new experience meeting this amazing person, Ethel Katz. Um, It was a great honor to, for me to meet her. Ethel Katz is a wonderful woman and her story is amazing. She was born in Buchach on July 3rd, 1922. Buchach was named um, Ukraine when Russia took over the whole area that, that the Nazi Germany had occupied. Katz had a family of seven members. Her, her older sister, Brania, her twin brother, um, Katz, and her she, she also had a twin brother. His name was Mania, and another set of twin brothers, which is crazy, Mulis and Rumak. Her dad, Anshel, I'm saying it right? Okay. He was a well-known person in, in his community. He helped a lot of people with a lot of things, and they call him a good master. Her mom passed away before Hitler came into power. Um, so life for Ethel Katz and her family changed dramatically when Hitler came to power, going from a happy life in Buchach, Poland, to a war spent in hiding with the loss of all of her relatives. It was a horrific time when Buchach was invaded by the Nazi Germany in 1941. It was all going fine until the Nazi took over her city. Soon the Jews um, were being 
uh, forced to wear armbands. And they were not allowed to be in many places. Like they were restricted from schools, their homes were taken over. Um, they were forced to resign from jobs. Their stores were being closed down. They were not allowed to go to restaurants or, and if they were, they were, if they were allowed in, they had to sit on floors. Also, they were given a curfew and were assigned jobs to do. Cats and a family had to face all of these um, tortures and these were the regulations that was made by Hitler. Before all these had happened, when the Jews were living, a good, when the Jews were living their good life, the first uh, Russian came to her city. Kat said that this is her quote: "That um, although conditions were bad, we're still, we're at least not being killed. But unfortunately, it all started happening soon, and the um, and the Germans came to us." came to the city on July 5th, 1941, and took control of the Jews. And um, her twin brother, um, one, one day he came home from work, and, um, um, and the Nazi, um, well, Hitler, he, he made an order, he, he made an order that, um, that men between 18 ages of 18 and um, 50, they had to go register for uh, before um, so some um, before before 6 p.m. So on the day this order was made, his brother came home and he he told his family that he'll he'll be home in an hour, but he never made it back home. He was just that that was the last day they ever saw him. So soon, soon um, they had to leave their home, escape, and um, hide in many different places. Um, the one thing that we have in common that we, she, she's a painter and I paint too. She draws, I draw. I'm going to show you some of her drawings. Her, this is this is their first hiding place, the chicken coop. Hi. Higher, sure, I'll just stand up. Thank you. One of the adults. So, the chicken coop. The chicken coop. They were there for three months, hiding. And um, in 1943, her second, their second hiding place. This is a, yeah. a corn, stacks of corn from, um, from, um, from October, from 1942, work. yes. Okay. Another hiding place called the shack. The shack. Um, this is the leopard uh, empty house. Yes, the empty house. We were hiding there for four from months. From midst, uh, from in the middle of uh, in in their village, in the middle of their village, and this is um. Grainfield. Grainfield. The and last house. The, la the last house they were hiding. And. Um, That's why we were murdered, the yes. family. And sh she lost all her family members. And um, she, she, she ran and she just went back to her hometown. Four months behind a uh, fake wall. And the house was filled with German soldiers for four months. This is how she was actually hiding. This is the position she, she was, yeah, it's really upsetting. Um, she was there for about four months without water, nothing. Like she just had a little bit of water and some bread and not, nothing. That was it. Um, well, this really caught my attention because she had nobody. It's just it was just her by herself. No one, no nobody there. From Ethel's story, I've learned that that this type of incidents still happening all around, all around the world. 
And there's one thing that I got to remember is that, oh, is that to be strong and never uh, always believe in yourself that what you're doing is right and always put your head up for anything that you feel like is, is something wrong. It's not right. Always try to put your head up for anything. Don't be scared to say something. Always don't let it doubt yourself. Always just believe in yourself. Athlecat's story is very amazing. I will never forget about her and what had happened to her family. I will share this with my family, my kids, um, my friends, and everyone. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you really listened very carefully. You were very moved. You remember you scribbled every details what I I'm said. Like That's very yes, important yeah. to me, very important that the world knows how low the human beings lost their humanity, to what level they lost their humanity. Well, the world must know and we must work to eliminate that hatred because the, we must work and remember that it should never happen again. This, this never should happen again. We must... Uh, I you moon <laughs> We go on. We must work for a better world. All we have to do to eliminate the hatred, we must respect our neighbors, nationality, religion, language, culture. Then we could live in peace and harmony again. presents the Holocaust and I felt really great about great after I had this painting done it took me about a week um, and I felt really great I've never done anything anything like this before never this is, was my first painting it's, it's just amazing I love it I love it <laughs> Thank you guys.